Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we have to look at tropical development in the East Pacific, eye candy from the James Webb Space Telescope, two solar forcing studies, and one on the actuarial analysis of our current situation. But we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star in UV light from the SDO, and we find that the solar flaring has dropped a bit due to the departure of the active region sunspots on the west. We have excellent visibility of the new ones turned in over the limb, and we've likely got space weather already on its way to Earth now. First, let's look at those sunspots. It's the left side here, the bigger and more complex umbral zones. Already had an M-class event this morning. More may be expected. In addition to the sunspots, though, there is also a pretty sizable filament dancing on the polar crown just behind the sunspots. We're watching those for eruptive activity while we await the enhanced solar wind from this coronal hole. NOAA suggests it could arrive as early as tomorrow and produce low-level geomagnetic storm conditions. We also have an earthquake watch from this one. Excess magnitude event risk rising fast. Now we'll be watching that solar wind, but also the wind speed in this tropical system off the coast of Mexico. They say it's about to get a name, and if intensification goes as forecast, it's heading right up for landfall. Eyes open for that one. And how about that? The eye candy is up next. Cosmic Cliffs 3D model of the Carina Nebula complex. It's pretty stunning. It uses the web data combined with previous observations of where things are at relative distance to create this sequence. Link below. Very impressive. Up first in the science articles, we find yet another confirmation of solar forcing of neutral winds. Now, these are way up in the mesosphere and thermosphere, but it is no different in impact than what we see at ground level due to global electric circuit excitement and modulation of near-surface electric fields. Another similar story hits the ionospheric impact and concludes, Africa takes the harder hit than the Americas. Now, this is completely different from the induction risk, which does go by magnetic latitude. This is the particle perspective precipitation, which is worse at the equator. Half solar wind plasma and half Van Allen electrons, a CME compression on the sun side of Earth takes the impact. This is getting worse far faster than the auroral production, by the way, and that is amidst the ongoing magnetic pole shift. And speaking of which, and the risks of solar activity, someone sent me this yesterday, a snapshot of part of the home insurance renewal. It's excluding solar and electromagnetic damage. I have learned that a couple agencies actually already have this in their policy, but most do not. Several are just putting it in now. I guess their risk assessors decided that the situation has crossed a line. Folks, come out and see us at Observer Ranch. Not only do we have a lot of good events on deck this season, but we've got the biggest RV spaces around. You can bring yours, rent one of ours, get a cabin, or tent camp it. We have enough stuff to occupy your little ones as well. Way more kid-friendly stuff than I anticipated originally. Anyway, would love to see you. ObserverRanch.com We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.